You're watching World Insight. Let's continue our discussion about China-U.S. relations. Security always tops the agenda in geopolitics, whether it pertains to the China-U.S. relationship or Northeast Asia. But there are signs, according to some, that Northeast Asia will have more cooperation in the near future. The 20th anniversary of China-Japan-South Korea cooperation has just been celebrated. The leaders meeting amongst the three countries sought common ground on diplomacy aimed at denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula. Xu Hui, a professor at the National Defense University of China and a military and defense expert, explained that despite misconceptions, cooperation, not confrontation, predominates China-U.S. relationship. Let's take a look. So Chinese military and defense experts like you, what is the bottom line that China is willing to deal with when it comes to China-U.S. relations, mm -hmm. security-wise? Okay, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, pe when people think about China-U.S. relations, they are tending to perceive this relation from the confrontational perspectives. Well, the intentionally or unintentionally ignore the you know corporations. Mm. We have a lot of corporations, but we have to acknowledge that today there is a lot of negative development. But compared with history, I think we still have the confidence that we still have the you know chance to have a you know soft landing of this round of tension. And as a military, I think we have to work together to avoid this big ship from sinking to but the But how could you, while well, the other side has already mm. disinvited China, for example, to the latest uh, joint military exercise of last year, mm. which uh, happened a year earlier. And meanwhile, you have also seen rhetorics coming from Washington suggest China as the mm. rivalry. And mm. meanwhile, there's uh, sensitive issues like Hong Kong, Taiwan, Tibet, Xinjiang, mm. human rights, which have been um, putting pressure on the bilateral relations for quite some time, but this time, once again, escalating that tension. Oh, how could, uh, security-wise, you work together? It's very hard, right. if I understand right. Uh, the issues you mentioned uh, is not something really new. No, not at it all. Come out. But not resolved. Come out again and again. And yes, it's not, it has not resolved, but it has not you know, push these bilateral relations off track in the past. Maybe in these rounds of, you know, tensions, uh, you know, provoked by the other side, I think maybe they play uh, even, you know, bad impact on the relationships. But I think the more challenging and the more provocations the Americans do on us, I think the more damage to their reputation in the global you know, stages. Things are changing fast, as you may know. The uncertainty is yeah. uh, everywhere. What about in Northeast Asia? When we're talking about Northeast Asia, we should not only focus on the Korean Peninsula. Mm. There are bigger pictures. Yes, there I are bigger pictures. We are coming back, I think, you know. Since the turn of the century, you know, up to 2012, and China, Japan, South Korea's cooperation, you know, developed very fast. And we have celebrated the 20 years of trilateral cooperation. I think we have coming back on track. But, you know, uh, Professor, yes, indeed, uh, there was a trilateral uh, state leader meeting earlier uh, in Chengdu. However, uh, what exactly will be the lasting impact of that is still a question mark. Chinese President Xi Jinping is to visit Japan, but the two countries are still on two different visions. For example, Japan is looking at the United States as security guarantee, but looking at China more with economic engagement. So will this uh, division of labor, quote unquote, be able to transform the earlier relationship? But that's a question mark, isn't it? The most important thing this time for the trilateral meeting in Chengdu, I think, is that uh, both South Korea and Japan take China's rejuvenation is a great opportunity rather than a threat mm. and they show the willingness you know to work together either among the three members or through a kind of joint hands 
to develop a third party's market and work together. I think that's a very positive development and we're also looking forward to the coming state visit by mm -hmm. our President Xi Jinping to Japan. That I, I believe and I really hope that will be a milestone visit for the further reconciliation and cooperation for the true prosperity and peace in this East Asia. But territorial issues still exist between China and Japan. We have the wisdom, you know. We lived with that for century, half a century now. With the concept of sharing disputes, we properly, you know, deal with that issue and avoid these small issues, prevent, you know, bigger corporations among the members. And all we notice, we benefit from that. All right. What about South China Sea? Since you also uh, talk about the Northeast Asia, of course, uh, the China ASEAN relationship has a lot to do with it. Yeah, South China Sea, you know, it's a challenge to China's relation with some ASEAN members. But also, I think, provide opportunity for us to know each other. And the positive development is that ASEAN as a whole, they understand China's uh, good willingness for a peaceful settlement mm -hmm. with the, you know, negotiations on COC and the, uh, with the strengthening of bilateral trade, social, cultural relationships. Mm -hmm. And also those uh, different, you know, uh, claimants of, of the territory, after several rounds of test or, you know, uh, kind of uh, tensions, you know, crisis, or semi-crisis, we say, they finally find out also they understand China's good intention for a peaceful settlement. Yeah. So while somebody tried to force them to choose side, you know, either on the side of China or so-called on the China side of America, I think neither side they choose. Most of the members, they choose the side of peace and development yeah. rather than stand by with somebody to confront with others. But I think that shows to us the wisdom of the ASEAN members, also the Eastern culture. One of the things that you've been doing, uh, General mm. Xu, is to incorporate the young generals and mm. military personnel from all over the world and get them trained here in China to work with the Chinese side as well. I was at earlier some of your events. It was very impressive coming from 60s and 70 countries, uh, military personnel coming together under one roof, discuss about world peace. Mm -hmm. Now, General Xu, um, to what extent China will make the effort to bring all of these different minds and voices together mm -hmm. at a time when uh, the apparent leadership of the United States has been rather retreating than succeeding. Our purpose is to invite them coming here to take advantage of international platform. On one hand, let them have an understanding of real picture of China, seeing is believing. But the biggest advantage and superiority of our college is that the international you know, exchange. Mm. Because we invited all countries who have diplomatic relations with us coming to our college. We have 100, almost 180 countries send their senior officers either for career development training, I mean preparing for future generalship, or for short-term exchange, include the superpower United States of American senior officers. You know, I, we encourage them to have an open mind and uh, you know, respect the principle of non-attribution policy mm -hmm. to share with each other, to learn to know the other's perspectives. Mm -hmm. So to reduce misperception and misunderstanding and the final way is to share experience, the final ways for a peaceful settlement to help the world disputes. I think different countries officers coming will take whatever they need. And China was the lot is the largest developing country. So in their understandings our solution and the concept may be more or less helpful yeah. to resolve their own problems. General Xu, finally, before we go, um, we've seen a lot of changes going on right now. The issue is unpredictability. Mm. Now, the military and the security aspect of mm. a country needs is the time and the energy and the clear strategic thinking to develop. At a time of big uncertainties, how will these issues be figured out? How much confidence do you have about China's uh, process of doing it and its possible results? I think my answer or solution is that communication, 
dialogue, rather than you know simply you know blaming each other, or even you know have tensions. From this point of view, I do hope someday in our college or either in the American National Defense University, we can have that kind of bilateral senior officer or general's policy dialogue. We need to talk with each other face to face, mm. even though we are living in a digital world. But the face to face, eye to eye, you know, look at each other's dialogue like us is irreplaceable. And I'm sure if we sit together, finally we can find out we are not necessarily to confront with each other. We have a bigger room to work together for the common goods for both sides and the world. And that is all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, try to find us World Insight. CGTN into your search engine. Check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook. I'm Tian Wei. On behalf of the team, thanks for watching. And tune in again next time for more insights across China, Japan, and around the world.